Hey, remember the Game Awards? Fuck, that was ages ago. I mean, fun. Who needs any of that? Anyway, the end is nigh. Well, kind of. Well, not really. Well, we can only hope. Therefore, we've just enough time for the real Game Awards. My Game Awards. The superior race of Game Awards. Some are brought into question the validity of my previous top 10 games of 2016 list. Specifically the 10, the games, and the 2016 bit. But I don't see any problems here. It's perfect. This list is going to be even better because I barely played any AAA games that came out last year because fuck supporting that noise it's most certainly has nothing to do with the fact that it would be significantly cheaper to become a heroin addict so this list was interesting to make but hey it's certainly going to be way better than the average game journalist's list whose production seems to be near automatic which leads us to <laughs> like to put this higher for its maddening cluster rape of a narrative which is a which is a which is a good thing apparently i feel like the combat isn't half as precise or an eighth as fun as bayonetta or metal gear rising which are two of my favorite games of all time but hey at least i can fulfill my fantasies of being able to murder miners god this is such a shit gimmick now i know what you're thinking asian you cerebral giant i am but a leprechaun in comparison to your immense intellect so i don't understand why you've put murder miners on your best games of 2017 list <laughs> Well, in response, I say, why isn't it on your best games of 2017 list? Oh, you don't have one? Well, fuck me good and gentle. I guess it's going to have to be on my list then. And my rules say that this game is more fun than it has any right to be. And is most certainly a Far Cry 3 better than most modern multiplayer shooters. Yeah, you heard me. Holy shit, is that... It, 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 is that color? What? Color? Is that legal? And a villain? I actually give a shit about and what? A, a protagonist that has an actual honest to god character arc that has a direct consequence on the gameplay and is actually fun and enjoyable and varied from big blue bollocks to shadow warrior 2 uh, is that against the law did ubisoft get sued for this did they have to pay a fine it's almost as if open world games can be more than just pretty time wasters that are ultimately as hollow as the moon and i have multiple former nasa scientists who will back me up on this Hey, didn't I say Shadow Warrior 2 earlier? It went fucking mental! Not only is it fun with a first-person melee system that, even despite the decree of the Holy Divine Prophet, actually fucking works, the customization is crazy chock-a-block. Some would say it's overly meticulous. I would say, quit being so right, you keenly observant little bitch. However, if you can manage to be patient with it, you can turn seemingly useless weapons into the thumb of God. <laughs> Though the argument could be made that its tongue through cheek Zamina and occasional bullet sponge enemy can get rather grating, however, I say, just fucking get over it! With Bennett Foddy. This is probably the best example of a walking simulator that I've ever seen. You see, the idea of a walking simulator is to take the player through an unconventional storytelling experience and... Well, it's already nailed the unconventional part fairly well, I'd say. Now it just needs some wanker with a funny accent to wax philosophically down your fucking ear. There's no oh, feeling more intense than- is. Earlier in the year, debate was circling around Cuphead for its difficulty and elitism and gaming or some shit. I've got no dick nobbling clue why Cuphead copped all the flack when the fact that only a handful of people will ever have the time, patience, and sheer willpower to ever complete it is considered an integral part of the experience. <gasps> but as Sisyphianly impossible as this game is, it's amazing how motivating an iota of context and the threat of getting Nietzsche's quoted at you every time you fuck up can be. The unconventional gameplay that just gently molests the line of being unfair is engaging, but it will make you its daddy. I mean, it will be your daddy. I mean, it will... It will violate you. 
The next game's Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy is a simple but hilarious lampoon of the visual novel genre, which uses its ridiculous premise to convey a truly heartwarming story. A smidge overwritten, but it definitely did stick with pop culture references. Before I thought about it. It's definitely an invigorating experience, but it is not dead sexy. Deep, multi-layered, black forest cape of a game theory game. It is a simple, straightforward, Lamington narrative with a semi a unique storytelling gimmick. I cucking hate this idea that keeps going around that anything that's even vaguely unconventional is actually this deep, complex, philosophical, metaphorical experience that's a metaphor for the futility of existence or some shit. Bring that judge on you whores! I don't know, whatever. Still. Fuck visual novels, honestly, fuck off. Fight of Gods is a truly righteous experience made by people with massive swinging balls. Fooled out and his hot load spewed all over the baby, giving him his first facial when he's only the young age of a few months. I'm not thinking about that. I was raised in a religious household and went to a Catholic high school, so as such, I am deeply deeply atheistic. So I'm willing to forgive teething issues like choppy animation and balancing for the sake of pissing Jesus Christ and Gut Mabuza in a battle to the death. I would do absolutely anything to see the addition of Muhammad to the player roster. I do realize that there are several obvious and decapitating reasons why that'll never happen, but still, a boy can have faith and pray to a Renegade Angel. Alright, this next game is going to be a little bit controversial, but I like to think I know my video, James, and I feel like I have the constitution to stand by my opinion. So number seven is Xavier Renegade Angel. Some people seem to think that Rick and Morty is some sort of pinnacle of surrealist existentialism. <laughs> yeah, no, this shit is more psychological than Sigmund Freud eating his mother's ass. You are you you are seeing this, right? You are you are seeing this what's happening on screen right now, right? You, you, you get why I'm holding this to such a high standard, right? This video game isn't human. I don't even think it's real. I'm not even convinced that I'm conscious right now. It is such too deep for you, bait. I'm amazed there isn't more game theory bullshit on this shit. Welcome to the US Army. How can I help you? I need some of that disease you guys invented. Crack? The other one. AIDS. That's the spice. You'll need to fill out an HC248 requisition form. I don't have time for that. I shouldn't do this, but here. Someone left this in the lost and found. Futada. This shit spits wit quick. Skip for skip a bit of fit. I mean, it's well written, and you'll leave a link in the description where you can watch it. It ain't ever gonna be no mainstream new Colossus, but it holds a very, very special place in my heart. Speaking of new Colossus, Wolfenstein the New Colossus is not going to be appearing on this list. Yeah, yeah, no. Sorry, you cheeky bugger. I'm not entirely sure what award nominated game direction is, but it sure as shit ain't making the same game fucking twice. That's why I'm popping number six on Wolfenstein The New Order. Now, Doom, Do Doom is great and all, but it only seems to do one thing. It does that one thing extremely well, but as Bruce Lee once said, fear not the hooker who sucked a thousand dicks, but the hooker who has sucked one dick a thousand times. That doesn't even work as a metaphor, let alone a joke. But what does work is the gameplay and the setting variety. Excellent! But it's this refreshingly self-aware and grim story that truly makes it stand out from most shooty shooty bang bang games that I've played in the last Fortnite Battle Royale. Yeah, close enough. There have been many detractors of this opinion, but I love this game and everything it stands for, and it is most certainly better than this smut, and I will repeat that objective truth until it stops being the objective fucking truth. Which is why my number five position is going to the smut. Hey, Struth can't fucking plot twist of the century. Ah, get in, can't. As much as I appreciate the sentiment of Fortnite Cattle Royale, I've easily had more fun with friends with Pug. Even if it was mostly from bitching about how bad it was and fucking with Chinese people in the voice chat. But will I ever say that this thing game is a good thing? Ha 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 ha!
<laughs> Do hats have time in them? Of course not. It is the time that contains the hats, as evidenced by our next title. <laughs> it's a hat in time. This game is sweet. And it knows it. It's just really fun and charming and fills your eyes with childlike wonder, which is nice. It's like ukulele, except it has Jontron, so it's better in every single way possible. Young lady, if I catch you in the studio- Not spreading Nazi propaganda. You'll receive a ticket so big you'll be in debt for years. Sadly, it picked a really, really, really bad time to release, so unfortunately it managed to snake past most people's radars. Much like our next game. <laughs> snake pass is interesting. A lot of people gave this a pause. And for very good reason. Donkey once said some funny words in a video of it once, and fair enough, the word spaghetti is both incredibly funny and argumentative. However, let me offer a counter argument. This game only looks weird and controls weirder because you've never played anything like it. Oh, come on, that doesn't count. Fuck you. So what we have here is a platformer where you cannot jump. That's like an Your FPS where you don't shoot things or a simulator that isn't boring. It was an experiment to try and flip a fundamental of the genre on its ass and it amazingly works. Just as you learn to become a more proficient jumper by playing platformers, and just as you learn how to become a more accurate shooter from playing FPSs, you learn to control this adorable length of shit the more you play this slither. And it eventually becomes one of the most uniquely satisfying experiences to come out this year. But I will admit that it is unorthodox, and unorthodoxy creates division. And that division has made the player base a real no man's land. Or should I say, No Man's Sky 3! Yes! 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 We did it! We did it again! No Man's Sky 3! The game of the year! I can't just keep giving No Man's Sky Game of the Year. It's just not right. And I think someone else has a similar running gag. Guess I'll just have to rely on another ambitious indie game that had been hyped up for many years on the back of a unique selling point and honestly no other relating factors. Hmm. A great plan in that <laughs> Literally every praise has befallen this game short of curing AIDS, so I'm just going to say that to everyone at Studio MDHR and to everyone else involved in the creation of this art piece, I just want to say genuinely thank you for your talent and dedication to bringing cup representation to the mainstream. Not enough! Dedication to nab the top spot. <laughs> yeah, nah, mate. You see, I may love Cuphead, but I judge this the same way I judge the Leech Beauty contest. Ultimately, the decision falls to whomever sinks their teeth in me the deepest. And what I've found is that a lot of artsy indie games are like a are like a flashy suit of armor. Certainly very nice to look at, but ultimately they are hollow. And by that I mean. Short. Cuphead tries admirably to avoid this by actually having engaging gameplay, and uh, I more or less enjoyed every second of it. More or less. But I'm done and done with it in like eight, ten hours. Now what? Am I being pernickety? Absolutely! If I could nominate a syringe full of dopamine being intravenously injected directly into my skull for Game of the Year, I would, and according to the rules, I'm probably gonna make that happen one day, but until then, I'm sticking with the next best thing, and unlike my previous metaphor, it is no... Hollow Knight. I love this game. I love this game so much. I bought the plushie for the damn thing. A game that started from humble beginnings that led to the inception of an intricate, intriguing, interlocking world interloped by an inquisitive little insect that keeps on surprising, keeps amazing, keeps astounding with beautiful artwork and soundtrack and its simple but satisfying 
platforming and combat, this game makes me happy. Very happy. And at the end of the day, that's all I ask for. Thank you for making me happy. To every game, game developer, creator, and friend that has made me happy, thank you for an amazing year, and I hope next year is even better, and hopefully, I'll actually get my fucking shit together and start making videos and shit next year. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> Hi, it's been a while again, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't have any excuses this time. It's I've moved out to other places and it's fun. Look, new places. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm not going to give you any definites as to, you know, future whatever's anything. Because you know how fucking bad I am at that. So, let's just say that, hypothetically... This video is brought to you by HumbleBundle.com. Everyone knows Humble Bundle, they're the humbliest mumbles to ever bumble the grumble. And right now you can get the honey sunky titty titty visual novel porn bundle. And yeah, make sure to slide that shit up and give me all the money. Fuck charity. Yay! Also, sorry to the Patreons I've neglected. I'll get to that at some other point, but until then, 